We're going to do an Aries program tonight. Uh, no PowerPoint. You've seen them before. I've done them before. Uh, this is just going to be an open forum between you and myself about Aries. Uh, so uh, what I want you to do tonight is to leave here informed. Try to answer all your questions. Try to tell you what it's all about. Uh, one thing that they did down at, uh, uh, in, in the classes that uh, we had at our state meeting back in January is uh, they kind of told of what they did, who they was, where they got their information from, and that type of thing. So just to, uh, just some things. I'm just going to tell you about myself to start with, and I'm not, pat I'm not patting myself on the back or anything. I just want to let you know what my background is as far as public service, emergency communications, disaster, that type of thing. I was licensed in 1996, January 1996. I, I got my technician license. Uh, my interest was in disaster communications uh, through Georgia Baptist. Uh, my son, he and Josh Townsend were best friends, and they, they were on the, on, the, uh, on the 11 meter band playing with it. I ran across Marvin Cooper, who was a repairman and also an amateur radio operator, and that spurred my interest in the amateur radio, and being involved with uh, Georgia Baptist and Brotherhood. Uh, I found out about that and found out they had an amateur radio group in that, so that's where my interest in amateur radio came from. Uh, upgraded to an extra class in May of 1997. And the reason that I did that, uh, when I got into to the training for disaster relief, I uh, took the phase two. They have two phases, the kind of the introductory and then the more advanced. And the, day, and the, the evening, Saturday afternoon, that we got through with that class. The next Wednesday, following Wednesday, I was on my way to Kentucky to flooding area. We got up there in the floods, and uh, we had a they had a trailer set up with HF and everything, and uh, they were looking for a band, to, uh, looking for a frequency to communicate back to Georgia on, and uh, everything. And and the, the highest uh, we either had in a general or advanced was the highest class that we had, and the guys on the 80-meter band were saying, hey, come on up here in the extra portion of the band. It's quiet up here. But nobody could go because they weren't licensed. So that was my uh, catalyst to go ahead and, and get everything that I could. So I, did, I got to working on that and uh, made extra in, in May of 97. Uh, with the Georgia Baptist, I went to Kentucky. Um, uh, as I just told you, I've been at tornadoes in Atlanta. Uh, in 1999, I spent two weeks in Puerto Rico after Hurricane George. I was the only communicator with Georgia Baptist Disaster Relief. But the most thing that I'd done, I, we, uh, I was either stirring beans or stirring rice. That's what we had every day. Rice and beans or beans and rice. Every day. But that's what the, the folks like to eat in that area, and so we accommodated them. And I was doing kind of like a uh, Dr. Pepper thing, 10, 2, and 4, communicating back to Atlanta. Uh, they were getting all the information that they needed uh, from us of how things were going, what we needed, what we didn't need, and things like that. So we had a contact set up down here in, in Georgia, and we contacted back and forth at those times every day uh, on 20 meters. So... Uh, but anyway, I was, I was getting uh, more training in feeding than I was in the communications. But carried my own, carried my own gear. Uh, one, one big issue that I, that I came in when I got there was if I hadn't had a solder gun, I probably wouldn't have communicated because we had the antenna up, but there was a loose connection with a connector, and I had to re-solder that. So, you know, been prepared uh, for that. Uh, I've trained in all areas of Georgia Baptist Disaster Relief. We have feeding, cleanup and recovery, child care, 
chaplaincy. We, I've trained in all of those. Uh, I trained as a unit director uh, to uh, be over a unit, uh, serve as a, what we call a blue hat, and we just did use the color of the hat, and I also went ahead and took the training that, uh, to be a white hat, and that was not just your unit, but you're over the entire operation uh, that Georgia has set up wherever we are. I, I have taken the training to do it. I haven't had the privilege to do it yet, but I'm hoping that uh, that soon will come. I get through with this work thing. <laughs> get into some of that retirement stuff. I'm just, uh, I hope the Lord allowed me to do that. Uh, they're getting back into the Aries. I've been the EC of Gordon County since 1998. <laughs> about as long as I've been the president of this club. Uh, I, went, I, I passed it off one time when I became the DEC, District Emergency Coordinator, for the Northwest. Then I handed that back and got the EC back. So now I'm back in. Frank moved above me into the Section Emergency Coordinator, so I took the district back. And I still hang on to the EC of Gordon County. So uh, back in 2002, if, if you were in that, AWRL offered emergency communication courses. I think it were like three levels. Well, I took all three of those because they had a grant. If you'd take it, get it finished in a certain amount of time, you had to pay for it, but then they would give you your money back. And it was, you had a mentor and you studied the material, you did a test, and then they passed your, gave you some uh, advice on what you needed to do or not do. So I took all three of those levels. Then I've also taken the FEMA 100, 200, 700, 800 that you always hear that you, you need, to, need to take. So you'll be familiar with the ICS, Instant Command System, uh, that's out there that we go under now. But that's just kind of, uh, that's kind of my background uh, of what I've done. A lot of it's been logistics uh, for, the, for the team that I've been on, but that's important too. Been, so I've been in the trailer. Well, I've been to a hurricane in Florida, uh, Wachula, Wachula, Florida. Um, hurricane came through there, and I was I was serving there. I know when I was there, it was pretty busy because I was in the trailer, mic in this hand and a mic in that hand, <laughs> so trying to trying to keep up with all the all the traffic. Uh, but it's been fun. I enjoy it. Uh, it's a great thing to be in if, if, if that's your cup of tea. All right, uh, just kind of moving on to Aries. Uh, Aries is, an, is a, the national organization for Aries is the American Radio Relay League. It's been around, Aries has been around since 1935. And uh, there's been very few changes in it until recently, if you've heard all of the uh, the talk of the uh, of the new uh, the the changes that they're you know they're trying to make, the, they call it the strategic plan for Aries, and we'll talk about that in just a few more. But that's our national organization. That's the umbrella that we work under, and then it gets and then it moves down to the state level or the section level. Georgia's one section. Georgia's section. That's all it is. Places like uh, Florida, they have northern Florida, middle Florida, southern Florida. So it's not just the, uh, it's just not the state, it's, it's the section, what section that you're working in. Um, you have a section emergency coordinator, which works under the section managers of the state of Georgia. Our, Frank Dean's our section emergency coordinator uh, here in Georgia. And then it breaks down to a district level, and you got your district emergency coordinators, which I am for Northwest. Uh, you got Northwest, Metro, Northeast, Central, South Central. You can go on the web page and you can see how the breakdown of all of those different sections, uh, districts that we have. And then you get then you come down to really where the rubber meets the road, and that's the county level. We're the one that's. This is where we do our our work at is with our county, uh, and each. Each county has an emergency coordinator, and not all 
Uh, there's some counties down south of Georgia that probably don't even have an amateur radio operator in it. But, you know, that's the goal of having a, a, a emergent coordinator for every county that there is. And some of them do multiple counties. So is there any questions about the, the structure? That's the structure that we have in Aries? Well, if it's uh, let's just say if it's down here on here on the county level, uh, we work under Courtney, our uh, yeah, emergency management director. If he if he needs help, then he will call me, and we'll make a decision on what we need to do. Uh, if it's a larger state call, a larger district call out. Uh, it could go to the section, coordinate, the section emergency coordinator, and then he would contact me, and then we'd just contact the counties. But it all comes down from section manager to section emergency coordinator to the district, and then down to the counties. So, so like in the Florida situation, who, like, who did they reach out to? They're just like, Georgia's the closest to us? They went into uh, what they did. They they reached out to the American Radio Relay League, and then they began to contact surrounding states. So that's kind of the way they go, and it could go different. I mean, if you have a section manager that knows a section manager in a particular state, uh, they'll contact each other, and it's just a matter of keeping everybody in the loop. If I you know if I activate here, then I'm gonna let the next one up the chain know that, you know, hey, this is what's going on in Gordon County. I may need some help. Uh, this depends on how big it is. And we're all small groups uh, here, in, here in this district and even across the state of Georgia and, and other states. We're, we're small. And they always say, can you, can you sustain 72 hours? Is your group large enough to sustain a deployment for 72 hours? That's kind of the minimum goal. And in our case, maybe, maybe not. Uh, you have, uh, you, you've got, you know, some people may be active, but due to their work or something like that, they may not be, may not be uh, available. And that's why we always say at Georgia Baptist, we got to have numbers because everybody can't go every time the call goes out. And uh, I know one of our directors told us, don't quit your day job because I'm not feeding you. <laughs> so that's the same way with areas. Don't quit your day job because we can't feed you. You got to take, you know, you got to take care of yourself. Uh, and that's why we uh, really need to get to know our neighbors uh, all around us so that, hey, if you, we need some help, we just pick up the phone and call and they'll come in. But uh, the ARRL started a, uh, what they call the new strategic plan, which now is the plan. Uh, and you can see it on, on their website. If it's, it's about a, let me see here. Don't tell me I left it at home. I did. Okay, don't tell me. I had it all stacked up, I thought. That's what I get for thinking. Uh, but it's 12 pages long if you print it out. And it tells you, uh, kind of, it kind of lays it all out for you as to uh, what it is all about. And there's a lot of kickback from a lot of the states because it's 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 asking us to do a lot of training, taking all the different FEMA courses, especially if you're in a leadership role, such as an emergency coordinator or a district or a section emergency coordinator. They're asking you to go and do a lot, spend a lot of your time and possibly money to go and take courses like uh, ICS 300. It's like a week long. And, you know, you can't just 
take off for a week and, and take these courses. So there's, there's a lot of kickback. There's a th you'll hear about uh, Aries Connect. Now, that's a new reporting system that they want to go to. Well, Georgia has been has their own reporting system, and we would send it in to the ARRL uh, so that they knew, knew what we were doing, and they could, you know, go to FEMA, FCC, and show that what amateur radio was doing. But uh, and that's uh, that's been a uh, for IT guys, they don't even like it. So for somebody that's not computer savvy and IT savvy, it's it's pretty hard, so we're working through that. Uh, and, 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 and in reality, uh, there's a lot of states that don't even, are not even under the ARRL in Aries. Uh, I was amazed at of the states that were not. Uh, they work under what they call OXCOM. When you hear OXCOM, what that is is Auxiliary Communications. And they're probably running over, running under their uh, emergency management or GEMA of the state. Um, Arizona does that. Arizona does that. So there you go. State of Arizona, they run Oxcom, not ARRL. Um, so anyway, it's 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 uh, something that we're having to work through. Yeah. Where did the race the races, yeah, that, that is a government-type-based group of amateur radio operators. And if you're in races, you work for your local government. You know that, and uh, you don't, you're not messing around with Aries guys out here that's just doing the, their thing in Aries. You're, you, you, you communicate just for the government of your county or state. And it was, uh, it's that old thing that, you know, uh, if there was uh, some disaster in, or, or something happened and, they, and the government shut the, the radio waves down for amateur radio operators, then they would be allowed to, to communicate. There are some there are some racist groups out there, but I don't know of many. Very strict. Um, they don't like you or you seem uh, <laughs> wrong way. <laughs> uh, but um, you know we're we're communi we're communicators. That's what we that's what we want to go into and uh, provide. Uh, back up auxiliary communications for whoever we are working with. Kind of take the load off of their uh, their systems if they're working, or provide them with a system of communications uh, with the uh, amateur radio. Uh, this getting kind of back to the strategic plan. Uh, the first level that they had was. You would just take the local training. You wouldn't, you wouldn't worry about taking the ICS 100, 200, 700, 800. You would just take the local training as to whatever uh, was required of you. They call that kind of like an entry level. Then the second level was taking, uh, taking more of the FEMA courses for that, uh, for an EC. And then if you were higher than that, they're even, they even looking at you taking more courses. And it's good. They're good courses if you can take them. And like I say, but a lot of people can't, can't take time off and do that. And I'm not going to turn down in Gordon County. I'm not just be, if you don't want to take 100, 200, 700, 800, I'm not going to turn you down if I know that you're a good operator. I need operators. Uh, people have been out there on the radio and uh, know how to operate. Uh, we need them. Uh, the training, the training of those courses are optional to me, and I think that's the feeling of um, of most of your leadership. Uh, so any, anyway, we'll be we're working through that, and we'll just have to see how it comes between ARRL and the 
and the states and the sections as to uh, how it goes. Uh, we're just going to, I mean, here in Georgia, we're just, we're continuing on with what we've always done. Uh, it's kind of like I've heard, I go over there and work with Courtney. He doesn't care if you're ARRL affiliated or not. They probably think it's a, a retirement plan. <laughs> as long as you can work that radio, provide them communications in a professional manner, that's what they're after. And that's what we want to provide. We had a, uh, and again, uh, we want to be communicators. Sometimes if you get under Oxcom, you're, you're kind of under some government entity and you might be, uh, might be a gopher. And we don't want to become gophers. Uh, we're trained to communicate, and that's, that's what we want to do. Um, the thing that um, we, had a, uh, we have a slogan in the, had a slogan in the communications for uh, Georgia Baptist was getting the message through. That was our motto, getting the message through. Um, and though in the state of Georgia, there's three modes that they recognize, and if, if you, I think it's on the website, and if you've been to the meetings, Three, D Star, Winlink, and FL Digi, which is PSK 31 or 125, whichever way you wanted to use it. And that was the, that was the other than the voice. That was the three modes that they kind of recognized, and they they pushed for us to um, train to train on and get familiar with was D Star, Winlink, and FL Digi. Um, you know how I am. We got a toolbox and we got tools in it. We're going to use whatever tool works. Uh, with being flexible is what it's all about. Uh, these, are, these are probably not modes that you even like, that you're not going to go out there every day and try to make contacts on. Packet, wind link packet, I'm always talking about that, but it's nothing I want to go out there every day and try to make contacts on it because you can't. But it's a way of getting a message from point A to point B and get one back. Uh, and it doesn't, everybody doesn't hear what you're saying, uh, voice. You, like, again, as I've said, you don't want to call for 10 body bags over voice. A whole lot, a whole lot nicer, just put it in a, in a message and send it. So uh, your like or dislike of Winlink or your like of, oh, it, and it's not going to be all digital modes. It's not going to be all FM. It's not going to be all sideband. It's going to be whatever works in, in Aries. Uh, I know everybody has their favorite modes and that's what they push and that's great. But in Aries, we, we got to be flexible. We use whatever, whatever we got to use uh, to get that message through. <clears throat> and as far as equipment, uh, those, those modes of Winlink, HF, FM, maybe D-Star, and I know everybody can't afford it. I've been a ham for over 20-some years, and I've just, I've just kind of collected this stuff slowly, waiting on that deal, that sale or that deal at the ham fest, and pick up on uh, TNCs and radios or whatever, uh, towers, whatever it took to get there. So... I don't expect you to go out and dump a bunch of money out on radio equipment, but just collect it, try to work, try to work toward that. Have a go box. Can you go portable? Uh, can you go out in the field and set up? Uh, that's, that's what you're trying to, that's your, that's your goal of being portable. Uh, and Alan had a very good presentation on having that go bag for yourself. You got your go box with your radio equipment ready to go. Have you got your go bag for yourself to go? If you, if you got your radio and everything for it, you don't have anything for yourself, you're not gonna last 72 hours. You gotta have your food, your water, your, your uh, medications, whatever you gotta have to sustain that 72 hours. <clears throat> So, um, training, 
Uh, how do you train in, in Aries? Uh, we do it. We do it all the time. The, these uh, presentations we have here at the club. It's training. It's amateur radio. It's Aries. Uh, you get you get that training from both nets that we have on Thursday night. You got a you got a simplex net. You got a D rats net. You got the repeater net. All of that is net procedures, and it tests you and you test your equipment. Um, if you've done net control uh, as much as I have, Melinda, Steve, if the conditions are poor, and if you just hear them go, uh, you know who it was. I mean, I, I, can, have, I can have people's names and calls written down before they ever get through because I recognize who they are, and that's getting to know your neighbor. Um, and, and that's the relationship that we need to do. Um, we have an areas net, uh, net every Tuesday night. 7.30 we have the digital net, and this month we've been running peer-to-peer -peer on a packet. Uh, jump in there and, and make a contact with us uh, if, you have that, if you have that capabilities. Uh, we have the repeater net at 8 o'clock on the 805. Um, so uh, check in, and uh, there we even try to have a little uh, program at the end of the Aries repeater net. Uh, each net controller tries to have a little little program uh, with some good information. So uh, check in and be there. Um, public service events. We do public service events here. It gives us an opportunity to go out in the field and you, and you, you see what it's just like we do a, even if we do a Christmas parade up there, what do we got to deal with, Scott, downtown? Noise. Noise. I mean, it teaches you the, the noise. How, how do I overcome that noise? I know what the, I'm going to expect. I'm going to have that noise. Um, then also, uh, two of the best, uh, we have field day here. Show you how to set up. Uh, we set up antennas portably. We set up a station portably, emergency power. It's all, and you, and you work in some of the awfulest conditions that there is in a year. You got everybody trying to talk, and you're in there trying to do what you're trying to do, and you're working under some bad, some bad band conditions. So uh, that's great training. Uh, probably two of the best, two of the other best uh, trainings we have is the Georgia Death Race coming up March, last Saturday in this month, and then the uh, Georgia Jewel, which is in September. You go out um, in the field, you set up portably, you're running emergency power, you're passing traffic, and then you get, then you get hit with, um, why don't this work now? It was working when I left home. It, 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 you get to work through problems, and you get to solve those problems. I hear so many people, well, it was, my, you know, and digital communication is one of the worst. Uh, for that, you get out there, it was working when I left home, but it don't work now. What's, what's changed? <coughs> Excuse me, and you have, to, you have to work through that, and that's... That's uh, some of the best training to be out in the field and uh, doing emergency communications. So uh, again, so we work, uh, as I said, with Brian's question there, we work with Courtney and uh, under his uh, directorship, whatever he might need. Uh, you say, well, why we want to do all this? There's never anything happened in Gordon County. Well, that's, that's pretty well true. I mean, there's not been a whole lot that we've been called out on. When it comes. But when it comes, Barbara can tell you about, about the, the snow. Yeah, when they, they came to my, to my house and said, we need you to come down. <laughs> I have no way to get there. Well, we're sending somebody for you. <laughs> there you go. I don't, I don't think I was in the amateur radio at that time. Mm. Uh, we've uh, been called. We've, we've gone to the... Uh, the, the uh, EOC a couple of times during severe weather. Uh, 
when when Woody was in there, we did a uh, airplane crash where they were looking for the plane, and we helped a little bit in that. But again, it's just like Barbara said: when that time comes, then we we need to be and want to be prepared to do whatever it is that they need us to do to set up uh, and be professional. Uh, we've worked with them in drills. Uh, we were in a hospital drill here. Been two or three years ago now, four years ago. Been a while back. So, uh, and I've I've told you this before. I when they up in Dayton, where they had the uh, EC of the county that 9/11 happened in, and that was that was what he said. Why do we do all this training for this? For that when that one time happens. You and I may not see it, or we may not see it but once, but we'll be ready uh, to do that. Um, so there's two, to me, there's two, there's two levels as far as the county. You're either deployable or you're a support. And that could change depending on your situation. Uh, just say for Ed example, Ed's up there on the side of the mountain, great great location, but he ain't able, he's not able to go and deploy at this time. But he's a great support person. He can support us by listening out for what we're doing. If somebody needed relayed or we missed something, then he could catch that. So just because you can't go or you're disabled or whatever, doesn't mean that you can't uh, participate. It's just like Frank's dad, and I've known Frank's dad for a long time. He's been in Army Mars and uh, uh, amateur radio forever. He just say, "Son, I'm not going to go down there and sit at the fire station." But he said, "If you need anything, I got every band there is, and the legal limit to run it on." <laughs> so that's you need those type of people as well. So just because you can't do it, and and you and your work may hinder you, you may not be able to deploy and, and stay there all day, but you, you could spend a few hours in the morning or the evening uh, just helping there or either at your home home station. So there you go. Anybody got any questions? Yeah. Yeah. I think I'm safe in saying being a member of Gordon County Aries does not put you at risk of being deployed to Puerto Rico or Florida to do hurricane support. Uh, just local. But if someone here was interested in making themselves available to deploy outside, how do they go about that? Well, uh, it would be just like uh, the story that we heard in, right. in January. If the ARRL puts the call out and they say we need X number of uh, people and you need to... Uh, they put out a list of qualifications and you can meet those qualifications and you have the time and you want to go to Puerto Rico after it's been wiped out by a hurricane or you want to go out west or Florida, then there's your opportunity. But this is, a, this is all volunteers. You volunteered yourself, your time, your equipment to serve and your money. There's no telling how many thousands and millions of dollars that amateur radio is given to their to their communities, their nation, uh, just by serving uh, on amateur radio. And a lot of times you don't realize that amateur radio is there. It's always in the background. We're the, we're the silent guys and girls. You don't know that we're there. Uh, but no, you're, you're not obligated to go anywhere. That you don't you, that you don't want to. But if, um, some, if someone was interested, if I understood correctly, is it Jim? I don't remember the last name. Has additional training available for someone that did want to make themselves available? Right. If you're if you're a, okay, you're on a local level. You're working with Gordon County and myself as your EC uh, in the state of Georgia. That we have a um, Matt team a mutual aid team that could go other parts of Georgia 
or they could go outside of Georgia and you can be part of his team as well. You can still be a part of Gordon County, but you could also be available for them as well. And then it'd be ARRL or state may call, but you could get that, you know, you'll get that information and you'll hear about that call out if you're available to do that. It's just like myself, you know, I could be called. I thought, it might get, I, th I thought we might get a call to go down to uh, South Georgia when that uh, tornado came through that killed those people in Alabama. But uh, didn't have a call out, so no chance to do that. But I think his question was, how did you get on, get on the list or recognized? you have to do that yourself? Or just let me. Once you let them know that you're available, then, the, then they know to call you? Yes, if you'll, if you'll let, I mean, just like if you wanted to get on the, the, the MAT team here in Georgia, mm -hmm. if you'll just let me know, then I'll put you in contact with the the uh, coordinator over that and y'all pick it up and go from there. Additional? I think that was part of your question. Yeah, yeah I, I, it was a leading question. I was at the same presentation. <laughs> okay. I want to make sure everybody understood. If you are interested in deploying, you would need to sign up for this other team, the, the mutual aid team. But they have to know about you. They so have to know about to make the and, they, and they want to interact and train with you before they would ever consider deploying. Oh. And then, uh, and then uh, just like I said, uh, getting to know your neighbor. Uh, okay, say something hit up here in Whitfield County. And Hank got on the phone and said, hey, fellas, you got anybody that can help me? You have to know. Then, then he'll call me, and then I know who's on the list, and I'll say, can you go? When are you going to go? Can you go? And uh, it's done on a local level like that as well. People have to make the initial move to get on your list is what you're saying. Yes. Yeah, we need, you know, you need to be, uh, you need to be signed. You know, I need, I need to have your name. And it, to me, this is, we've talked about areas in this county f for, for a long time, and, and we need to train more and do more. And this is kind of, to me, this is kind of a time to uh, a reorganization of uh, Gordon County areas and get, get those that are wanting to be Aries support areas uh, deployable on the, on the list. And uh, pick it up so that we don't get caught. Other questions? September. Then there'll be another one in January. What September is going to be is GMO wants us to have, an, have, have another class like that. And with the skills class that I just described to you, uh, we're thinking about doing that on a state level. Have a skills day, second weekend in September. That's already in the planning stage. Yes. I got one right here. Oh, good. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I've got uh, kind of got some. Uh, I got some Mary's uh, applications right here. Um, we're in that time of the year when we have uh, tornadoes, severe thunderstorms, flooding. Uh, type thing. I sent everybody uh, one of these in your email today. Kind of tells you uh, uh, what to report, what they're looking for, how to report it. Uh, gives you some uh, weather radio information, who's in, who to contact, uh, and so on and so forth. And this is this is a something I got out of a Skywarn class. None that I know of at this time. I think just about everybody in here has had them. Yeah, 
As long as we can get the little, uh, the little lady that uh, did the last one here, I'm good with her. I think her name was Laura. Laura? Yeah, Laura. She's a, she's a go-getter. Yeah, oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, if you go to uh, the uh, web page for Peachtree City and click on their uh, spotter classes, there, may be, there could be some around. You just never know. They pop up from time to time. I think in September they're uh, planning on having a spotter class there as well. Yes, Steve? We got any mother on our local level that uh, any kind of training with our service agency on modern equipment like the day? Say we got Kenwood with a thousand cattle vans, find out where the is going to be to use. Yeah, we need, to, we, need to, we need to see. That's things that we need to work on. That's something, like I say, that's something we all need to train on. And that's all my fault. Yeah, but you know, we have so many operators on one frequency. A lot of times, like back when we were doing events in uh, San Diego, like we did the Miramar Air Show. Yeah. And uh, we had a lot of kids, a lot of parents, guys, guys walking around. And then we had, you know, some that... Uh, Rode around with the uh, other security guards to uh, keep the. Uh, there was probably they did a show just for all the volunteers, and there was like 200 volunteers there. So sometimes it's tough to be like that. They'll have a lot of people to talk on. Yeah. So you just gotta know your radio. But getting back to the uh, getting back to the Skywarn thing, um, if we have uh, well, last Thursday night we we canceled it because of all the lightning popping around and everything. We just kind of monitored. We didn't really go into an official weather net uh, because it wasn't really that bad. But uh, had we gone into a severe thunderstorm warning or a tornado warning, then uh, yeah, we we would have brought up one. Uh, Steve's always around the radio most of the time. So uh, if he feels a necessity, or even if you feel a necessity that needs one that needs to be brought up, do so, because you never know who's listening. Um, because that's, that's, that's the level that the, the National Weather Service wants to do it. We want to do it on the local level. And you gather all your information there, and if something is reportable, then we'll call it in. Whoever net control or whoever net control deems to do it, we'll we'll send that information in into them because they don't need fifty people calling the phone. They just need one that's got the information that they're looking for. We had a trees and heavy damage in a certain area, and that's what they that's what they want to hear. And that's we want to do it on a local level, and then we'll call it in. Another thing that we want to do is just like the other night, uh, Rome was running the weather net. You need people that's, you need, you need, you need your net control for Gordon County and you need uh, the net controller, needs someone to be listening in whatever county that's got an active net going on because you're going to gain information. If it's in Floyd County, it could come hit us. So we need to, we need to be listening to surrounding counties as well. All right, anybody got anything else? Questions? All right, uh, appreciate your uh, time and attention. And uh, we definitely got to work on our, on our areas program here in Gordon County.